In this video, we will cover the most efficient way to deal with the exam. So I'll break this video into two sections. Number one, everything that you should be focusing on before the exam. And number two, everything that you should be keeping in mind on the exam. But when it comes to what you should be doing before the exam, the first point is to create a recent snapshot right before you go into the exam. Because just in case you install a a different tool or just in case you change some environment variables or maybe your machine ran a big crash and etc. It's very 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 nice to just have recent snapshots before that you can jump back to. This could definitely save you and I have heard horror stories of people their machine crashing or something just goes horribly wrong and they don't have any snapshots to do be full back to and that's a really bad scenario. So number one, make sure you have a snapshot before the exam. Number two, using a camera is required for the exam proctoring. So just make sure that your webcam, uh, work cartridge you're fine and if you were to uh, show some text or anything that you can actually see this with the, the camera. Just a well-functioning camera beforehand is important. The next step is to practice your reaches areas, right? So, so if you're incredibly good when it comes to initial access, but you have no idea how to perform privilege escalation, that very well might be needed in the active directory channel. Then that's a big problem, right? So you really want to make sure that you're well-rounded so that anything that they could really throw at you that would realistically give harm you're prepared for. Like I'll give you some scenarios. Some people might do very good with AD or initial access, but that means they have to pivot and you have no idea what to do. So it's, it's very important to just be well-rounded because pivoting is something that very well could come. Or if you fuck with post exploitation in lateral movement, or perhaps manual SQL injection or maybe previous complaints, right? It's just important to be covered, well covered all around. So yeah, that's the next step that I would suggest there. Another thing is to make sure that all your tools are working and you have it organized in your D app. You don't want to spend time grabbing tools in GitHub or finding some version of Minicats that might work on a specific architecture, etc. You just want to have something that you've reliably used in the past and that you have well structured in your notes or in your uh, in your tally and you know it's actually where to find it. You might have like your Privisk section for Linux and a Privisk section for Windows and maybe a place where you have all your web shells and terrible tools, etc. The next step is to have very clear efficient notes. Maybe you've seen me using my notes in some of my details and a lot of people have been really liking them and grabbing them and such on people have been really liking it. That works really well for me, but maybe if it won't work really well for you, right? I'm just saying people are preferences when it comes to notes. And the most important part is just to have notes that simply work. When you need to look up uh, how to do specific attacks or you need to uh, remember the, the syntax or the of your attack, then you can just quickly search it, quickly copy paste it, and grab it, and then execute it. Those are really the important part when it comes to the assumptions you should be focusing on before the exam. And again, obviously we help with all of this. You can check out the free course that's two hours on YouTube. And we also have an entire course in the WAP where you can ask me personal questions. You can talk to all the students that's doing it. And we cover all of this that I'm covering in the video and much, much, much more. And it's already over 12 hours of content and it's growing. It's, uh, I think you would really, really like it if you're interested in OCP. It's just, it's going to be insanely valuable to you. The next step is the, what you should be focusing on the exam. And this is really crucial about it because I remember when I was about to do my exam and I never done it. It was extremely intimidating. I wasn't really sure if I was prepared or if I was still exactly what I should be doing, etc. There was just a lot of doubt again. But number one is to know which tools are and are not allowed on the OCP exam. Now, this is incredibly important uh, so that you don't steal a hash with responder and crack it. That will disqualify you, right? So, or you're doing, using SQL map for uh, SQL injection method, right? So, now, again, we cover all of this in the course and we have videos also on the specific on YouTube for this discrete topic. Too. But that is really crucial, right? Yeah? So just make sure that you do that. And a similar point as well is to know what general things for this allowed on the exam as well. So not just tools, but for instance, like using LLM by ChatGPT is not allowed. But messaging people on Discord that's good to instantly get you disqualified as well. So it's very important that you don't mess up here. The next step is to always run a full scan on the part. You're like, check your reports. Don't just like run a default MF scan and check the top thousand ports. And then you'll mess out, check all of the ports and including UDP if he sucks, not just TCP. And rerun the scan as well, at least two times, especially if he gives fucked, because environments can be unstable. And I have definitely heard of people that's paying the exam because it was a port that was open that was vulnerable, but the the scan didn't catch it and they never read on the scan several times. And because of that, they failed. The next piece of advice is to make sure that you note down all of the evidence for the reports because the first 24 hours, the OCP exam itself, it's not just about hacking the machines, but it's about hacking the machines and collecting all of the relevant evidence so that when you have the reporting section, if you do not have the evidence, such as screenshots, tool outputs, etc., that you will need for the reports, you can't request getting access to the lab again because you have lost that window. Okay, so it's really important that you do that. The next thing is to take frequent breaks to avoid getting overly exhausted or having being having too much of a mental fog. Now, I will note that this is a subjective thing, but I just found that it was incredibly useful for me personally. And before taking breaks, I would also highly suggest that you run, you run tools 
um, that takes this bit of time to to get done. I think tools like Nikto or maybe like a full TCP with service enumeration and default scripts like Nmap or maybe like a WinPiece or LinPiece, etc. Like run these type of tools right before you take a break. Save a little bit of time to be a bit more efficient. And when you come back from the break, you will come back with a fresh mind and more energy and uh, fresh eyes. And you will look at that output and uh, you will hopefully know exactly what to do with it. The next thing that's very important is to not assume that the exam will necessarily be insanely difficult or impossible or that you need to do something extremely uncommon that you've never done something or that it's going to be insanely hard or maybe even that the exam is hyper realistic and there's no CTF elements in this, right? So my best advice is really just to treat it like another CTF because it really is. Really just follow your methodology and treat it like another CTF. Don't be overly anxious about it, okay? That's, it, that's really, really important because um, once you get overly stressed or whatever and you think that you shouldn't just follow your methodology, then you're becoming less efficient. So really just stay relaxed and really just follow your methodology and treat it like another CTF for game. Now, the next uh, piece of advice is to, um, I would personally start on the, the Active Directory section and just get on with that, or at least as far as you can before you get like into a big rabbit hole and you just can't seem to make progress. And then I would move on to the standard option. But again, this is subjective. It's just personal preference of mine and what I would suggest. But if you find that, uh, doing standard on the machine first or maybe jumping back and forth is way more efficient for you, then definitely do that. Another thing with rabbit holes as well is if a machine, you get stuck for like an hour and you can't make any progress. I don't mean like, you know what type of exploit it is, but you're struggling to find the exploit code or maybe you're struggling to understand it or tweak the code in a specific scenario, etc. In that scenario, you kind of know what to do. You're just having a difficult time with it. I mean, if you have absolutely no idea what to do and you're getting stuck for like an hour, what I would recommend then is just noting it down for that specific machine. Just have the information, kind of like what you did and what you checked, and then just move on. I highly recommend this because you don't need to hack every single machine to pass the exam. But if you waste all of your energy and all of your time on the rabbit hole, then it's going to be more difficult to complete the rest if you're extremely mentally exhausted, right? Because it can be mentally exhausting, so be strategic. This is important. At the end of the exam, or when you get enough points to complete the OCD exam, you're not done yet. What I would recommend you do now, and this is incredibly important, because you need the reporting to be successful and people have failed over the reports and you need the, the lab, right? The OCP exam lab to be successful. You need enough points. After you've gotten enough points, then I would recommend that you rehack all of the machines that you have done after you've gotten enough points and make sure that you can rehack all of those machines just by using your notes. Don't be biased. Don't like read in between the lines of your notes and kind of like make shortcuts, etc. Don't do that. Just use your notes step by step and hack the machine. If you see that there are parts where you're like, oh, I can't just copy paste this and I can hack this machine with my notes, then guess what? Then you have to, you have to just improve your notes because on the report, it's incredibly important that someone else can use your notes and hack all of the machines that you did in the exact way that you did it off just your notes alone. Okay. That is incredibly important. A C E S T. Always check everything seven times. And yeah, those are really all my advice. If this sounds intimidating or overwhelming, don't you worry. We have amazing resources on all of this. You could check out the YouTube. There's a mini version of the course that's just two hours. And then if you want the full access to the course with a bunch more checklists and a bunch more useful courses, if you're maybe even more beginner than OCP, or if you want to ask me personal questions to study along with all the other students that's inside her right now, then I highly suggest uh, checking out the WAP. You can find the link down below. And I think it will be absolutely amazing and I can't wait, wait to help you guys and best of luck with OCP. Please don't be overly intimidated, just, just put in the work, don't worry too much, just put in the work, put in the right work. I promise you that if you just work hard and you do the right things and hopefully I can help you with giving you all the right resources and all of the right learning material, notes and methodology and guidance and reassurance and everything that you need, I really hope that you get to crush the OCP and I believe in you.